This is SB Nation's AFC preview. We're talking AFC East right now with Nick Stevens. Nick, let's start with uh, your completely impartial feelings about the New England Patriots. 12-4 and last year, over under according to uh, Las Vegas for their win total 11 this year. What do you think? Uh, I think Las Vegas is selling Tom Brady and his rededicated 36-year-old going on 24-year-old self a little bit short. Last season finished kind of sourly, so much so that they told everyone that was good at catching footballs, get out of Foxborough. Brady lost his top five receivers last year. Well, Gronkowski will be back at some point, but right now I'm missing those top five ca pass catchers last yeah, year. Yeah, I'm thinking Gronkowski will start the year on the pup, but otherwise you lie. Welker, get out of here. You've been terrific. Deion Branch, you're 96 years old. Nobody likes hanging around with Brandon Lloyd. Or Aaron Hernandez, for that matter. Or Aaron Hernandez. <laughs> and for good cause, I've heard. Yes. So, Pats, most people probably think 11-5 and five is a reasonable uh, record. 12-4, and four, uh, that's what Vegas is. 11 and, uh, I'm going to go 13-3. and three. Favorable schedule, rededicated Tom Brady, and a boss running game. I think you're a little bit biased. I'm going to say it's a push on the 11. I see them, they've got a, a tough, the entire division is facing the uh, NFC South and the AFC North. It's a tough slate of games. They're going to find a way to lose some, especially with uh, Danny Amendola getting injured eh, by week seven, probably. Uh, little known fact, uh, Danny Amendola was built from the leftover parts of J.D. Drew. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, Dolphins, 7-9 last year. Promising start for Ryan Tannehill and uh, rookie coach. 7.5 is their over-under for wins. What do you think? Um, I really like the way that Joe Philbin conducts himself because he spends absolutely no emotion whatsoever putting the Dolphins to work. They have a very icy, like cool demeanor. <laughs> Much like the fans. Uh, I really, it's fantastic that they have resembled the emotional state of your coach week every week yeah. at Margaritaville Stadium. Um, I'm going to sell... Low here. That's 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 not enough for the Dolphins. I'm gonna go nine and seven, maybe with a cap of ten and six. Love the moves they made at wide receiver, Brandon Gibson, re-signing Hartline, bringing in Mike Wallace. Don't like the running back position, but if Tannehill is anything but serviceable, you're looking at a really strong offense with Cameron Wake and a decent pass rush. Ten and six for the Dolphins. Uh, I'm gonna give them over, but just barely. Eight and eight is his what. What Fair about? Enough. Here's something we can agree on: the New York Jets being lousy this year. Uh, six and ten last year. Uh, actually had a shot at the playoffs as late as week 14, I think, mm -hmm. before the wheels really came off. Six and a half is their over under. <laughs> I can't even finish that sentence. <laughs> uh, I think we're gonna say under. Uh, let's let's review. <laughs> now they say that nobody circles the wagons like the Buffalo Bills, but nobody has the wheels come off of the wagons and the flaming wheels go running into the crowd and people die like when the New York Jets, because what it's just such a beautiful disaster. The way the Jets have built this team, the way they've fallen apart with all the braggadocio from Rex, it's amazing. They've got running backs getting arrested. Mark Sanchez, first thing in the preseason, threw a pick six. There is so much greatness to come in terms of terrible from the Jets. I got them going three and 13. I think that's, uh, that, that's, <laughs> We can agree that it's going to be under for sure. Right. They're, they're, it's the same team as last year, except uh, more questions at quarterback, mm -hmm. worse running backs, mm -hmm. uh, still lousy wide receivers. Mm -hmm. Braylon Edwards, mm -hmm. Ooh. Mm -hmm. that's, that's never a good sign for your team. <laughs> Things are bad for the Jets. Let's talk about Bills briefly. Mm -hmm. They're a team. Yep. Uh, six and ten last year, six and a half. I feel like they're going to be slightly over that. Right. Uh, well, hey, listen, how, who am I to say that a team that has head coach rhymes with the lead singer of Extreme, Gary Sharon, Doug Marone, come on, six and a half, God, it's got to be at least. There's no, there's no way you can see the Bills possibly doing any better than six and ten. I think they're going to reduplicate the success of last year. More balls to C.J. Spiller, great. Questions at wide receiver beyond Stevie Johnson, yes. And a decimated defense that's not going to offer much more than a serviceable secondary. So if you hit them over the middle, they are gone, baby, gone. I'm going to say C.J. Spiller getting 30 touches a game is going to be worth seven wins. Or at least that's, that's what I hope. I'm going to say it's slightly over. So there's your down and dirty AFC East preview. Good news, as always, for fans of the New England Patriots. Less so for everybody else in the division, especially Jets fans. Sorry, Rex Ryan, you're still a good quote.